Hi everyone, you're welcome to MJ Apparel Tutorial and today we'll be learning how to cut and sew a 720 degree peplum. So if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and also like this video. So we'll go straight to the point. A 720 degree peplum is made up of two full circles. So one full circle is 360 degree and the other one is 360 degree. When added together, we get 720 degree degree. So that is why it is called a 720 degree peplum. And in cutting it, you are going to be cutting through full circle when cutting a 720 degree peplum. And because we are cutting through full circle, we'll be dividing the waist by two so that we can get the radius for each of the circle we are cutting. So next we are going to be calculating the radius and in doing that we'll be needing our waist measurement. So the waist measurement I'm working with is 46 plus 1 equals to 47. So next I'll be dividing this 47 by 2 because I'll be cutting two circles. So if I divide the 47 by 2 the answer I got is 23.5. So this 23.5 is what I'm going to be using to calculate the radius so to calculate the radius i'll be dividing the 23.5 by 6.28 and the answer is 3.76 so this 3.76 is what i'll be using as the radius when cutting the circle so next we will be determining the amount of fabric to fold and in determining that what we'll be doing is to add the radius plus the flay length plus sewing allowance. So the radius I'm working with is 3.76 plus my flay length is 10 inch then plus 1 for sewing allowance. So the answer I got is 14.76 when I added them together. So I'll be using 14.76 to fold my fabric. We'll be going over to cut the circle. Remember we are cutting two full circle. One circle is 360, the other is 360. So we'll go over to cutting of our fabric. So here I have my fabric laid on the table. The next thing I'll be doing is to measure the 10.76 I said I'll be using for the folding, but I'll be rounding it up to 15 inch. So I'll be using 15 inch. So the next I'll be doing is to measure the 15 inch at this point. So I'll measure the 15 inch and then I'll mark. So after marking the 15 inch point, next I'm going to be doing is to fold it over, taking note of the 15 inch point. So I'll fold it over like this. This is the first folding. So when you do this, you'll be having two layers. So I'm just confirming the measurements again to see if I have 15 inch at this point. So I have 15 inch and I have two layers. So after this, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to measure another 15 inch at this point. So I'll measure another 15 inch at this point like this. Then I'll mark. After which I'm going to be folding it over this way and I'll arrange it. So make sure you arrange it when folding so that no part of the fabric will be short after cutting. So this is what we have after folding it over. So now I have four folds. So I'll be measuring it again to be sure that I have 15 inch at this point. So here I have 15 inch already. So I'm just trying to arrange it to make sure that everywhere lays down perfect so i'll quickly repeat what i did again for better understanding so i open up my fabric first so after opening it up i laid it well on the table the next thing i did was to measure 15 inch at this side first after that i folded it over taking note of that 15 inch point so you fold it over like this, that means you'll be having 15 inch at the top and 15 inch below. So after folding it over, you make sure you arrange it so that there will be no shortage. The next thing I did after folding it was to measure another 15 inch at this point like this. 
so i measure another 15 inch on this side of the fabric also and i marked and folded it over again so you are going to be having four layers when you fold it so and you make sure that you arrange it so that everywhere lays down equally so i have 15 inch on both sides i have 15 inch at this point and 15 inch on the other side so the next i'll be doing is to insert the radius at this point that is the folded part of the fabric the radius i'm working with is 3.76 so i'll be inserting it at this point that is folded so i'll place my tape at the tip like this and i'll mark the 3.76 So when marking you make sure that the tip the tape at the tip does not move you only rotate the tape below so you just mark the point like this round so after marking i'll be inserting my flail length plus the sewing allowance so the flail length i'm using is 10 inch plus one inch for the sewing allowance i'm going to be marking it at this point like this round after which i will connect the dots together so after connecting the line this is what we have next i'm going to be confirming the measurement so i'll be checking if i have 15 inch all around to make sure that after cutting i'll have a perfect circle so after doing this i'm going to be cutting off and i'll also be using the same process to cut the second flip here i have the two flip cut so this is the first flip and the second flip so i'll just open up this one for you to see what it looks like so when it is being opened, this is what you are going to be having, a perfect circle with no opening. So this is how it's going to look like, there is no opening on any side. The second one also does not have an opening. So the next I'm going to be doing is to iron my interface on it. So the interface I'm using is a gum stick. If you have a peplum stick, you can also use it. I'm using this because I will not be adding a quinoline to it. So this is going to give it the standing effect for me. So I'll just iron it and I'll come back. So after attaching the gum stick, this is what I have. So I attach the gum stick on the two circles, on the two flays. So this is the first one and the other one so I have my gum stay attached to it and I've also cut my lining the same way I cut the flay. This is the first lining and I have the second lining also. So you make sure you cut the lining the way you cut the flay so that it will fit perfectly when sewing. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to slash the side open. So I'm going to be slashing the side open like this. I'm going to be joining these two parts together. Then I will cut open. Make sure that the edges is neat so that you will not have issues when joining. So I'm going to be cutting it over like this and I will do the same thing for my main fabric. So this is what I have after slashing the side and this is what the second one looked like and also the lining I did the same thing for the lining also so next thing I'm going to be doing is to attach the side I'm going to be joining one side of the flay to the other side the good side facing the good side so I'm going to be joining it like this then I will sew 0.5 inch and I'll also be doing the same thing on the lining I will join the two lining together on the side that I cut open and I will sew. So after sewing, I will iron the seam and I will come back. So after joining the two flakes together, this is what we have. I sewed this part together and 
I opened up the seam and ironed it. That is why it's looking like this. And I also did the same thing for the lining. So this is what the inside looked like. And the lining also, I did the same thing on the lining. I joined the two sides together like this. And I opened up the seam and also ironed the seam so that it will lay down flat very well. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to join the lining to the main fabric and in doing that I'm going to be placing the lining front facing front that is the good side facing the good side so I'll be placing it like this so when cutting your lining make sure that the lining and the fabric you cut them the same because if one is shorter than the other you are going to struggle and have issues when joining them together but if they are the same it's going to go smoothly so i'll just place them together securing it with a pin after which i'm going to be closing up the edges by 0.5 inch So after attaching the lining, next I'll be going over to my sewing machine to sew the 0.5 into this way. I'll sew it round to the other part after which I'll come back and show you the results. So after sewing, this is what we have. I sew this from this point round to the other point. So after sewing it, this is what it's going to look like. Next thing I'll be doing is to notch the edges of the flip. When notching, be careful so you don't cut your seam. So after notching it, I'm going to be turning it over using this open part. So after turning it over, this is what we have. So I'll just go ahead and give it a good press and also close the remaining opening we have. That is the waistline opening. So after ironing, this is what we have. So I went ahead to close this part also. I closed it round and this is the end result. As you can see, it came out fine. You can go ahead and attach this to the upper bodies of your peplum blouse after making it like this. So this is the end result of the peplum. So when attached to the upper bodies, you will get to see the waves and the fullness of the peplum. This is what it looked like when I attached it to the upper bodies. So as you can see, the waves are there and it came out very full. So if this video was helpful to you, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share and also drop a comment. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next tutorial.